almost got done uh, feeding most of the animals. We got all the chickens fed and the, the goats and uh, the rabbits. We've got a rabbitry. We'll show you that a little bit later. We've got uh, some hens and stuff we've got to get moved around in there. Uh, we'll, we'll get you up in there. We've actually had to put a gate up up here. Uh, we've got to get a gate put up up here. Uh, we've just got fencing up right now temporarily to uh, our, our cow, he ended up jumping out of our fencing, so we had to put him over in here. Uh, so we just temporarily put a fence up to hold him in until we can get a gate put up. Right here's our little male goat, the daddy to all the babies. Uh, he's, a, he's a butthead. He don't like anybody to touch him. Uh, when I catch him, I have to corner him in the barn up there and grab him by the horns. He just He's a, a pygmy is what he is. Uh, we like the smaller goats. We raise the Nigerian dwarfs and the pygmies. Uh, the Nigerian dwarf puts the, the milking into them, uh, and the pygmy just keeps them small in size. Uh, all of his babies had a real good temper. Uh, they, they stayed right with us. They didn't, they didn't try to butt us or anything like that. So uh, he throws good offspring. We're actually going to switch out bucks uh, in the next couple years because uh, we, we don't want a whole lot of line breeding or inbreeding, they call it. Uh, so we'll, we'll keep him for another year and let him breed our does. Uh, and then we'll swap him out. Uh, we just got done with all this stuff, so we're going to walk on down, and uh, we're going to feed our, uh, well, we actually fed our meat birds, but I'll show you our meat birds, and we're going to try to get in the garden this evening. The sun's about to go down, and uh, we can get in and trellis some. We got the trellising done yesterday. Uh, it was after dark. We were going to video it, but it was after dark when we finished it. Uh, I'll show you that, plus I'll show you how we're going to get our uh, uh, pink tip half runners trellised up. These right here are meat birds. They're, they're the Red Rangers, they call them. Uh, we, we raised the Cornish cross, and they're, they're real messy chickens. These seem to be more like chickens. Uh, the other ones, they just they just stayed laying around. These are, these are laying around now because they got their bellies full. Uh, we feed them twice a day. We fill up the two feeders. We keep them granite grit out there, uh, which is a big thing for these chickens. But these, these are small enough they can get in and out of this fencing. It's not electric right now. Uh, we don't have a whole, a whole lot of predator pressure here because of our dogs. Uh, we've got a big Pyrenees in our fence up here uh, that runs with the goats and such. And then we've got three smaller ones as her babies. They're about, uh, I don't know, they're close to three months old, I guess. And they're, they're in training, but they like, to, they like to bark and keep stuff run off. They, they, they do really well. Uh, so. But these here, we, we keep this fencing up so that the bigger chickens can't come in and eat all of their feed because we feed them a special meat bird crumble. Uh, it's 21%, I believe. Uh, so we just we just want the other ones to stay out of it because it's, it's a little more expensive than regular laying bellies and the other ones don't need the protein. Uh, they lay eggs plenty. We feed them a 12% uh, layer pellet to everything that we have. Uh, and they, they all seem to like it. They, they gobble it up. Uh, pretty significantly. We, we feed them a, a gallon feed, we come through and feed a little to all the other animals, then we come back later and feed them another gallon and they eat every bit of it and they ain't never anything left. And they get in our buildings, they stay in our buildings trying to eat all of our food. And last year we had tomatoes, we put out 106 tomato plants and our chickens, we let everything free range. Uh, and, and our chickens went down through there and they absolutely destroyed 106 tomato plants full of tomatoes. Uh, so this year we put our tomatoes in, in a lot over here. We'll walk over and take a look at it. Uh, the place is a mess right now. We just, it's, it's always a, a job around here. Of course, it's a farm, so everything's always just thrown, and I'm the world's worst at just throwing stuff around. This place needs to be weeded a little bit, but it's growing really well. We've got uh, jalapeno peppers, uh, rat tail cayennes. Look at these jalapenos. They're coming on good. They're absolutely loaded down with jalapenos, every one of them, even these little ones. They've even got jalapenos on them. Uh, we've got Roma tomatoes. We've got uh, Mr. Stripey's, Mortgage Lifters. Uh, Lord, there's about six or eight different varieties we have in there. We've got the Big Bertha peppers. Uh, we've California got, Wonders. We've got some California Wonders. We've got some uh, Sweet Banana Peppers. Something knocked that pepper plant over right there. Uh, we've got a few little things growing down here. We stuck in buckets, we ran out of room. Uh, we, we started everything in our greenhouse this past year. 
and uh, we, we would start it in seed pods and once it got up we would transplant it into little buckets and cups right here we've got carrots we need to weed but we've got a few little carrots coming up we've never grown carrots before but I thought it'd be a good idea to try it in these swimming pools I've got a bunch of these around uh, I bought them a couple years ago for like a dollar or two from the dollar store uh, and I use them we water keep water around for the chickens and and the goats and cows and stuff they like to drink out of them and and honestly it's a it's a cheap water bowl for everything the pigs get in them and take baths they roll in them you know uh, they love it uh, we got a few little cucumbers growing i stuck them in a mineral bucket we're going to try that next year uh i this was a new thing for us but uh, i stuck these cucumbers in there and let them grow up this fence trellis uh just this i got this here for like 50 bucks uh, at a hardware store and i strung it out it's 150 foot long uh, I strung it out around this. I filled it up. This was this was our yard last year, and uh, this this year I decided that we're going to till it up, and uh, we're going to make it uh, a garden. Uh, my wife come out and she she walked it off and said right, right here is where we need to do it. Uh, so we we got the tiller out and we tilled everything. We went through. I actually planted five rows of corn in before I put the fencing up. And the chickens dug every single kernel up. There wasn't a single piece of corn came up in that. And it was early corn. I was excited to get early corn out, but they, they dug every bit of it up. Uh, after that, we decided we'll put peppers and tomatoes in here. I bought this fencing and uh, stretched it out in, in, I don't know, it took about 30, 45 minutes to get it stretched out. Uh, and seems to be keeping the chickens out. We'll get one or two in there every once in a while, but they don't really bother a whole lot. Uh, but they'll they'll walk around there they look for a way out they'll they'll find a little hole somewhere and they'll get under and then they're always looking for a way out uh, so they they're not really interested in getting in there and eating so they we've not lost any tomatoes to the chickens yet or anything like that but next year we're going to try with these like i was saying with these mineral buckets we're going to take these we've got uh, a couple people that's that started saving them for us uh that's what they they give the cattle with minerals in it they lick it and you know, with ours, we buy one mineral bucket a year because our two cows, they don't they don't need a whole lot of it. You know? uh, so we, we got people that gives them to us. And uh, next year, I'm going to try to plant them all along the fence row and put cucumbers and, and growing, uh, vining things in, uh, just like I did with this cucumber. This actually has three cucumber plants in it. Uh, one took off really, really well, and the other two is right behind it. And these were these were volunteer cucumber plants. They come up in our greenhouse where I dumped some seeds out onto a plastic bag in there. Uh, we've got a watermelon in there too. It's got a melon about that big on it. We just let it grow. Uh, and and these come up in that, so we transplant them out here, and they took right off. I mean, these are growing as good as the ones that's in the garden. Uh, I didn't think that we were going to have much of a cucumber harvest this year, but it, they've taken off. These right here, these are our butternut squash, and they're they're taking right off. I, when we put them in these buckets, we had one die right there. When we put them in these buckets, they was about half this size here. And you can see some of them is absolutely just exploded with growth. Uh, we've got our rat tail cayennes and we've got a few more finished that row off and then those are the big berthas we got those over in kentucky uh at a little place the guy had them cheap because it was close to the end of the year and we said why not get them and plant them uh you won't grow them if you don't plant them so we we got them stuck them in the ground they may come out and they may not and all these tomato plants here is just extras we had left over we got some broccoli up there in a bowl uh them them few little things there we've never grown broccoli same with cauliflower, we've never grown it. Uh, I've tried to plant cauliflower before in the past and never have done any good with it. Uh, this year was no exception. Cauliflower didn't do anything at all. Uh, broccoli, I didn't think it was gonna work. It was little bitty, it never did get any size to it. My wife come out here one evening when I was transplanting these tomatoes and stuff and she said, I'm gonna put the broccoli back in those pots and, and see what it'll do. And she stuck it in there and I said, ah, there's no way it's gonna grow. But she stuck it in there, and by golly, it's growing. Uh, so we're going to leave it right there and see if it won't grow in them pots and see if we can't get us some pot broccoli. Uh, we're going to transplant these squash out of these one-gallon buckets. I don't like growing them full in these, but they grow well. Uh, my uncle used to grow tomatoes in them, 
He would drill holes around the bottom so the water could run out. He used to grow tomatoes in those all the time. Uh, and they would get big full tomato plants and it, there was no tilling, you know, at the end of the year you just pull it out, throw your tomato plant away and you empty your bucket out, stack your bucket up and you start back next year. They're one gallon bit buckets. Uh, they're, I call them bit buckets, they drill bit buckets from uh, the coal mines. My uncle was a coal miner for 40 years and Lord, I guess we got about a thousand of them buckets laying around everywhere. We use them for everything. We water animals and carry feed and plant stuff and just just everything. It's just a just a all around good bucket to have. I'm a I'm a fanatic with buckets, anyways. Any any kind of container. I like containers for some reason. I've I've always had that thing, barrels and buckets and cups and 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 just little. I just I don't know. You can call me weird if you want to, but that's just how I've always been. Uh, we'll, we'll take a trip right down here. Uh, we'll take a look at this little garden here we put out. We didn't know we... I've had chickens right in this area for years and years. Uh, and we've never we've never grown anything right through here. But this year we decided, hey, we're going to take and till this out and see what we can grow here. Well, I put in two little rows of corn and they didn't grow at all. I mean, they didn't want to grow. We this is a this is a, a test. We've not weeded this garden at all. We come through with a hoe once and knock some of the bigger weeds out, but we've not weeded at all. So you can you can tell this is a this is a no management garden is what this is. Uh, we we stuck two rows two little rows of corn in. You can see some of it finally popped up. Some of it's tasseling out there. It's got a couple little ears on it. Uh, we stuck a few cucumber plants in. Some of them's made it. Some of them's not. Uh, you know, they're, they're doing what they want to do. We've gotten cucumber. Actually, there's one we can probably pick. The boys like to come out here and pick cucumbers. Uh, they don't like to eat them a whole lot, but they like to pick them. I guess I'm the same way. I, I love growing them. Uh, we've got, uh, I don't know, I think there's about eight. There was eight cucumber plants in here. Uh, that's the only big one today. There was eight cucumber plants in here. Or, no, there was 12 cucumber plants in here. I'm sorry. I think there's eight left uh, that didn't die and actually taken off. But we've not weeded at all. We stuck them in there, and I stuck these baskets around them to keep the chickens from scratching them out. Because chickens, they'll, if they see new dirt, you can see at the end of the rows there, if they see new dirt, they will dig it up every single time, and they like to bathe in it. Uh, they, they just, it's a chicken. That's what they do. We grew a few cabbage this year. We've already got one. It was big. I mean, these are about ready to get. They didn't get much size to them, but the leaves are good and tight. Uh, that one out there, it, it died off. I don't know what was the deal with it, but the rest of them, we planted eight in here. The uh, goat actually got loose one day and eat one of them before I could get him out of here. So we ended up with seven. That one died, so we had six. And I gave my mother one the other day, so we got five left. And, and they're doing pretty good. I mean, we've got a couple small ones, but the other three are good size. We don't eat a whole lot of cabbage. Uh, I may experiment and make a few cabbage rolls or something. But other than that, we don't, we don't eat them. Uh, we've got these onions. These are the sweet Vidalias. I've never had any luck growing onions at all. I've tried and tried and tried and tried to grow onions, and I can't never get them big as my, round as my thumb. And my wife said, I want to get some onions this year and plant them. I said, well, get them. It, you know, you can't grow them if they ain't in the ground. And we went and got a bag of onion sets. They were, they were the bulbs and stuck them in the ground. And, man, you talking about growth. We've not, like I said, we've not done anything to them but stick them in the ground. I've not fertilized this land. We've done nothing to this spot right here. Stick the plants in there and we walked away and left it. And this is what we've gotten. Them onions exploded. The, the rain came through and washed a lot of them down. I mean, they're bunched together. They're, they're not in a row anyway at all. We stuck them in the tops of the ground and left them. And man, if they ain't doing good. They are, they are big, pretty onions. And everybody says that you gotta let the, once it falls over, they're ready. But these don't show any signs of being ready whatsoever. And I'm, I'm wanting to pick them every day because I love onions. I can eat a sweet onion like an apple. Uh, but I'm, I'm going to try my best to stay away from them and leave them alone uh, so that they can get some size to them. Uh, maybe we'll get some big onions this year. We've done decided next year this whole plot here is going to be potatoes. The reason why is 
we put in four rows of potatoes right here, and they they they've bloomed three times already. They've grown up. They never did die back. You can see it's starting to die out a little bit right in there, but these never did die out. They're just now starting to fall over, but most of that's from our pups. Our little dogs like to get in here and they'll roll around. The potatoes was this high a month ago, and the pups would get in there and they would just roll around on them and break them down, and you can see they're way out here. I mean, they, they've bloomed and bloomed and bloomed, and I keep waiting for them to die so we can dig them up, but they ain't dying, so I'm letting them grow, and maybe we'll get a pile of potatoes out of this. We, we used about a, uh, maybe 15 pounds of potatoes to plant these four short rows. They're, what, 12, maybe 14 foot long, if that. Uh, and, and we planted them uh, about four to five inches apart when we put them in. We cut the potato, seed potatoes when we put them in. Uh, I didn't put any fertilizer on them. Only fertilizer's been in there is because chickens have been right in this area, uh, and and it's been there for years. And, and I told my wife, I said that I believe that spot right there will grow some stuff. And like I said, we put it in and we left it. We've not we've not been in this other than to pick some cucumbers and to get the cabbage. We've not done anything else except that. Right over here next to the fence, my wife we went over and got some guinea hogs from a, a, a friend of ours. Uh, and his wife was talking to my wife, and they had some real pretty sunflowers. And uh, my wife decided she'd like to grow a sunflower patch this year. So what we did is we got a bunch of sunflower seeds from the lady. I think she gave us two sunflower heads. They were two different kinds, but what we done is we just mixed the seeds together, mixed them up real good. And this was actually part of our yard. Uh, I come through with that little tiller and I tilled and tilled and tilled and I got it good and soft dirt you I mean you can stick your hand that deep in it you know without any pressure at all and uh, we come in me and my wife and we just we sprinkled the seeds up and down through here and man you talking about growth they I didn't fertilize again I didn't do anything like that we've not sprayed them all we did was put the seeds down cover them up and left them and this right here is what we've got some of these sunflowers are huge some of them's got bugs that climbs on them but nothing's really bothered them a whole lot you know there's a few little spots where they eat on them but they're growing really well i'm hoping that they grow a bunch and, and we can harvest some sunflowers to save for seeds plus get some that we can roast for the kids because the kids love sunflowers and and i would love to be able to grow them and, and feed them to them my uncle grows some sunflowers the heads on them are that big and they'll they'll grow 12 foot tall in the air i mean they're nice ones he didn't grow any this year. He said he was too old to fool with them. But hopefully these right here will get some good size to them and, and we'll get some growing. We'll walk down to the garden and uh, take a look at the trellis job we did last night and then we'll get set up and uh, get started on the other trellis. All right, we made it down here. This is what our trellis ended up being. You can see we, we went through and we trellised all four rows. Uh, we come back and we, we did what we call train a lot of them. It was dark by the time we got done with them. So we went through and got the most of them out of the rows and trained them up. Now we can get through the rows without walking all over our beans. Uh, we've got to come through. What I do is I do fertilize. Uh, I'll, I'll come through one time with some triple 10 all-purpose fertilizer. Uh, I'll, I'll sprinkle it in the middle of the row. And I'll come through with my tiller and I'll just till it under. Uh, I don't put it onto the plants, I just till it under the ground and as it rains it'll leach into the dirt and, and they'll grow to it and, and grow. Uh, these I never did fertilize, these big burgundy beans. The other beans I never did fertilize, but I like to fertilize late in the year if I plant stuff extra into the rows. I like to uh, fertilize a little bit because the, these others, they've sucked the nutrients plumb out of the ground and we didn't fertilize this ground last year at all. Uh, we grew on it. Everything grew good. Uh, we were we were going to not fertilize this year at all, but uh, I I would just feel better fertilizing a little bit. I, I'm not going overboard and fertilizing every day. I'll fertilize it once and we'll till it under and be done with it. Uh, maybe next year I'll come through. We see we put uh, the cows in here 
uh, of the fall, we, we take electric fence and fence it off, and we let the cows in here, and they graze on everything, uh, keep the grass heat down. We let pigs come in. We take the rabbit manure, and I'll sprinkle it out through the field. You know, so it does get fertilized naturally as well. The chickens are down here. When the cows are here, we feed them corn because the cows can't digest all the corn. They'll, they'll process it through their body and, and drop it out in their patties and the chickens will come along and they'll, they'll scratch them out, you know, spread them out and bust them open uh, looking for the corn. I, I know that's gross, but that's nature's way. The, the chickens will do it whether we want them to or not. Uh, and it doesn't hurt them at all. They eat the bugs. It keeps, keeps the flies way down. Uh, we, we had a whole lot of flies up there next to our cows because the chickens hadn't been going up to them. We actually had to hang a couple fly traps uh, to get the, get the flies knocked down a little bit. Uh, but we're, we're going to fertilize a little bit with these things. Uh, I won't do it now. It'll be you know, a couple weeks. These actually, we almost waited too late. You can see they're, they're up. We've got some of them up as high as the trellis the down through here. You can see how they, they wrap and grow. This one here was probably right here last night, but they, they just, they want to twist around something. And that little string, man, they just, they grab a hold of it and they grow plumb to the top. When they hit the top here, we'll take them and wrap them under and they'll grow out. And this whole thing will be a complete wall of beans. We've come down through, and for some reason, they grow better next to the posts. I don't know why. Uh, you, you would think if, if they grew better next to the post, I'd have a post every foot down through here, but... Uh, these things are expensive, uh, but uh, for some reason, last year was our experience with these, that the, the strings next to the posts always had the best pods of beans. I mean, you could reach in there and get a handful of beans in one pull. Uh, we picked over our beans last year. We had three rows of volunteer half runners and three rows of ancient beans. And our three rows of volunteer half runners, we picked over probably six times, and they were still loaded down when we ended up feeding them to the pigs. Uh, we just, we got tired of picking them, and, and we tried to give them away to family and friends, and nobody wanted to come and work for them. They wanted us to pick them for them for free. Uh, this year, we dove in head first. My wife, she, she, she loves to garden, but she hates to pick beans. Uh, I guess I'll, I'll dig in this year. If it gets bad, I'll come down here with a flashlight and pick them at night if I have to. Uh, but we, we grew 10 times the amount of beans this year as we did last year. Uh, and several different varieties. Like I said, we've got the burgundy, the royal burgundy beans is what they call them. We've got some of them coming on. We've got, they turn purple. They start out green and you can see they're starting to turn purple. Uh, we've got some of them coming on. I'm really excited to try those. I like beans, but... Uh, they, uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll try them and see uh, what they're like. Uh, in a few minutes, we're going to make our way up to the uh, pink tip half runners, and uh, we'll see what we can do about getting them trellised up. We'll see you in a minute. We're back down here in the garden. Uh, we, uh, we're going to try to get our last trellising of beans up. Uh, we, it's been non-stop working trying to get all these other ones trellis but these are these are one of ours that we're, we're really looking forward to these are our pink tip half runners uh, my uncle he that's all he talked about for the last couple years we found the pink tip peanut beans but he said no 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 that's not that's not pink tips uh, he said they're half runners they're they're a, they're a climbing bean uh, the peanut beans are a bush bean uh, but we we got online and we got to looking and and I'd seen a few little ads where people had had those uh, saying that they were pink tips, and I just, I didn't trust them. And uh, I'd, I'd watched some YouTube videos of people that had ordered from Hoss Tool, uh, and so I, I got in there, and, and they had them, sure enough. Uh, they didn't have any big packs, but they did have the little packs. Actually, one of the packs here, uh, my uncle come up and helped us plant them. Uh, that's one of the packs that they come in. We ordered six of these little packs, and that was it was plenty enough to plant what we wanted. We'll save the seed. They are an heirloom plant, so we'll save the seed out of these uh, to plant next year. We probably won't sell any of these. We had a lot of people ask to, to buy them. Uh, my wife, she went through and put them on our Facebook page uh, that we had them, and, and as soon as she put on there, and we only put on there that we had seeds, not that we had pink tip beans, but we had seeds. Uh, she got messages after messages of people wanting to buy them. Uh, I don't know that we'll sell many out of this patch. You know, 
Like I said, we've got four rows. They're, they're shorter rows, uh, but they're really nice. We're going to baby these and try to get a lot of produce off of these this year to save seed. I'm going to try to save. Uh, we, we put our seed in Gatorade bottles, uh, just something that my uncle done, and I just picked it up after him, and, and I've always done it. Uh, so we, we, we keep our seed in Gatorade bottles, we put it in the freezer, uh, and they keep really well. We had some pumpkin seeds that my uncle had in the freezer for, Lord, they was probably six or seven years old, I guess. And uh, we, we put them out last year, and man, I didn't think that they were going to germinate. And we had some others that we had bought uh, that were fresh. And uh, I told my wife, I said, I said, put about seven or eight in each hill. Uh, and we healed them up, and man, every one of them come up. I didn't think they would be any good, but they did. They germinated well. Uh, so that works for us. We're going to try to save these, and, and then next year we're going to probably triple or, or quadruple these uh, in the in the length of them if they taste good. You know, they may not be any good at all, and we'll just we'll grow a, a row of them and, and, and see. Like I said, I've never had them. My uncle's really excited. said he had never had them since he was little. All right, we're gonna get these trellised up. Uh, the way we trellis these is we use a TP. Uh, my uncle made these, he brought them up. Uh, we, we trellised several different styles this year. Uh, this is the way he wanted these trellis. They were a gift to him for Father's Day. He's like my dad. Uh, I call him Papa and Uncle Jerry. He's really, he's my mom's brother, uh, but uh, I've, my, I've not had any contact with my father in 15 years. Uh, maybe longer than that, but uh, Uncle Jerry, he's he's been around. We do everything together. We, me and my wife and him, actually just got back from a fishing trip. Uh, we went to the river and caught some catfish and and uh, some turtles and so forth. But uh, he, he I, I take what he says and 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 I try to uh, uh, work with it. Uh, sometimes I don't agree with him. You know, we're we're. Uh, from a family that that are hard-headed and I am one that is very hard-headed setting my ways and he's setting his he's a lot older than me so he's been around but th these were a gift to him so we're going to trellis them the way that he wants them trellised uh, and he showed us how to the he built these several years ago he got a 10 foot two before he ripped it down I think these are about a one by two uh, and he actually mounted it together he took a piece of wire and a, and a nail and put it together uh, right there and what, what he does with them is you just put them up. You cut the end of them at an angle so they go in the ground really easily. And you just you can spread them apart. You can go wide or you can go narrow. These rows here we planted narrow because we wanted them tied in. Uh, what we do with these is we come every fourth beam. Uh, as you can see, we've already done a few there. Uh, what we do is we set them up. We come every fourth beam. Let's see. Those got off a little bit, but it'll be okay. Let's see, these will actually be right here, because this is a new one. You'll just push it down into the next one. If you're doing it by yourself, you can push it down in and it'll hold itself. You get another one. Every fourth beam. Just poke it in the ground the same way. And what you'll do is you come in and just lean them together. They'll, they'll mesh in together pretty good. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and tie some of the uh, bell and twine about this high, about head high, I guess, uh, to hold everything good and tight. And I'm not decided yet. Uh, I probably will once I once I've thought about it. I probably will, but I'm going to come in with some bell and twine about this high, a uh, foot and a half, two foot, and I'm going to run it around these TPs so that the the ones in the middle actually has something to get a hold of before they shoot out, and they don't have to try to grow out directly from the ground. They can come up a little bit before they hit this, and they'll grow. The beans will be picking beans up this high. I mean, they'll get up. They'll get up high. Uh, these are our last ones to trellis, and then we're done trellising beans for the year. Uh, we'll still have to train them. We come down every morning and train beans, as I call it. Uh, we pull them down. Uh, once they get up past our trellises, they'll, they'll get their snake heads out, and I'll, I'll grab them and pull them back down, and I'll weave them through, you know, uh, to, to train them to grow where I want them to grow instead of where they want to grow. Uh, 
you know, everybody does it different. That's just how I do it. Uh, we get up in the mornings before the kids wake up. We get a cup of coffee and we walk through. It's not hard work. I drink my coffee as we're walking through, and we it's our quiet time. We train all the beans, uh, just something that we've done, you know, uh, and uh, we uh, we enjoy it. It's it's good good quality quiet time for us. Uh, me and my wife we both enjoy drinking coffee and, and staying out. Uh, as you can see. You know, the kids, we, we don't get a whole lot of time to, to be out a, alone by ourselves. The kids with five children, they come out and, and, and yell at us all the time. So we try to do things when they're busy, occupied with other stuff. Uh, they're getting ready to start school in about three weeks. Uh, we, we've actually been out all day doing some school shopping. Uh, I never knew things were so expensive until I got out into those stores. And, and we're, we've got kids that's up... In middle school, three of three of our children is in middle school, and man, you're talking about more expensive. They they like the the finer things in life. When they're when they're five and six years old, you can go to Walmart and pick them out a pair of shiny shoes that sparkle. And when they get up that big, you go to buy them a pair of shoes. They want the the hundred and fifty dollar Nikes. It's just, but I love it. You know, it, I would I wouldn't change it for anything. I love all of our children, uh, and and they they love us. Uh, I, I can tell it. They all, every one of them, come up and give us hugs and kisses and tell us they love us every single day, uh, and that—that's what makes it worthwhile. Uh, We—that's why we do what we do. Otherwise, you know, I could—I could live in a little bitty house and and uh, drive a little bitty car and and not have all of this daylight to dark work. Uh, you know, back breaking. Some of it's easy stuff. You know, trellis and beans. It's not hard work. It's time consuming, but it's not hard. But getting out here with a tiller and I hand till every bit of this I mean it's it's a big patch but that's something that I don't have to do I do it for my children to, to, to provide for my children I want to show them a good work ethic uh, you know they, they follow suit if I show that that you can get up and work from daylight to dark and 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 still spend time with your family and love your family and, and uh, uh, I, I try my best to live right uh, to, li to live a, a, a godly life. Uh, I'm, I am a Christian. Uh, we, we try to instill that in our children. Uh, we pray at every meal. Our children, a lot of times they'll argue about whose turn it is to get to pray. Uh, and and that, that makes me happy. Uh, you know, and, and that's why we do what we do. But if, if any of our videos help you out, like I said, if you have any suggestions or anything like that of anything that we can do different, uh, I'm, I'm all ears. I'm, I'm open to suggestions. I'm not saying that I'll do what you tell me to do because, like I said, I am hard-headed. But I, I will take suggestions. I like to take bits and pieces from everybody and then make my own. Uh, you know, we, we, we do things the way we want to around here, and that's that's the joy of it. That That's that's the freedom that we have as, as Americans. We get to do what we want to do, and this is what we choose to do every single day. Uh, we, we will we will take suggestions from anybody and and we do appreciate y'all watching and if you like what you see give us a like and subscribe and, and send us a comment and tell us you know let us know how good we're doing or or if we're doing bad you know if we're doing something that we shouldn't be doing let us know uh, like I said I'm not going to change what I'm doing because it works for me but but I'd like to know if I'm doing it wrong uh, maybe I'll change it you know if if, if another way works better I'm, I'm all ears. But uh, I appreciate it, and we'll see you next time.